Last week, Steve gave Arabella's clamp pieces some extra love with the first coat of varnish. This week, that nice pretty clamp finally gets bolted into place. But first, he and Joe need to finish work on the big thicknesser. It's got to be watertight. Thank God. Find that out when we get to make it tank. We have an issue. I made it too good. Too good. Need a little wiggle room. So our problem is, is that the gear fits in here and this isn't up enough to be able to get this scoop around the gear. So you gotta be able to have the gear kind of slide in with the shaft. And this is gonna get cut out, but it's buried down in the machine. So it's not really much of a worry. No, not quite. You're fetching up over here. You have to cut that a little deeper. Third time is the charm! Okay. There we go. Joe, it was like it was made for it. Yep, I think we'll do. We're happy. Let's, uh, let's leave this and go get all that stuff under cover. I'm giving it a second. With the thicknesser back in action, Thad came back for another try on that big keel timber of his.
So, first joints together, went together well. I'll go put the other one together and then uh, I'm gonna see about trying to get it put into place. Once the starboard one's in, I'll jump over to port and uh, tackle that one, but just in case they have some issues or something doesn't quite go as planned, I'd rather figure it out with one instead of doing them both simultaneously. Uh, the tape was just to keep the dolphinite from making a big mess. And uh, since it's all finished, you know, I like to keep it that way, looking nice. And then this piece of pine here with the three clamps is just to add some support to this joint as I move it around. Uh, once it's attached to all of the frames and the shelf is screwed on over the top of it, uh, all of the, these bolts will really only be just holding it together and from slipping fore and aft. But when we go to bend it in there, all of that pressure of that wanting to bend is going to be focused on those four bolts. So through the process of getting it into the boat, we want to try to back it up here and make sure that we don't end up splitting the plank. See if I can get it bent into place. Yeah. Should be fun. Time for the moment of truth. So I have some control over this. I've got block of wood so that we don't put one hard pressure point with some cardboard behind it as a little cushion so we don't mar the varnish. And that's slung. It goes out to a block which is attached to the boathouse over to one of the handy dandy come alongs you use all the time. And then that is hooked up to the other side of the boathouse. So I can crank the come along and slowly work this over and be able to go up and down the boat and check on everything and I'm just going to go real slow here and see how it wants to behave. The ends are currently a little long. So, so you can see, even by the time we bend in, we're going to be ending in here and we want to end in this frame bay here. So as I get a little closer, I'll have to come up and knock these off so that they don't end up hitting this sawn frame because this one isn't fared in. But we will do that as we get a little bit closer. cut this down it took a lot of tension off this so I'm gonna go in there and crank it up a little bit pull it a little tighter I just want to make sure that counting for the curve I don't cut it too short there's quite a bit of wiggle room uh, but we need a little tighter before I cut so as I pull this should kind of start to turn in and maybe pull back we'll see I know this seems really rough and ragged, but we're going to end up cutting it aft of this frame anyways. Because uh, the breast hook's going to come in here and the breast hook's going to come all the way back to here and get fastened over this. So it can be a little rough here at the very end and it's not a problem. It's just easier to cut it with the chainsaw than trying to get a handsaw in there and getting it pinched. Wowzers, it's hot out. It was really, really humid. It's actually not that hot, but it is really humid. I am just pouring sweat. So the clamp is clamped into place. I've got one bolt holding it at midship, so it couldn't go up or down, kind of as the focal point. Also couldn't slide for after as I locked it in. But it looks, looks really good. I am super happy. But I'm gonna need a hand to go in and bolt this thing in, so. 
I think I'm gonna go take a break, go cool off for a bit, and see if Grandpa can come help me tomorrow. And tomorrow morning when it's cool, he can go on the outside and counter bore and drive the bolts, and I can go on the inside and clamp and drill, and we can get the starboard side fastened tomorrow, and I'll launch into doing the port. Port should go a little bit quicker. Now that I've done starboard, that all went pretty smoothly, learned a little bit. Uh, I was pretty, pretty hesitant to put too much pressure and yard this thing in here, but it really didn't take much pressure at all, and it hit all the lines really well. Uh, so I think we're in great shape. I'm stoked. <laughs> it looks beautiful. Time to do some dolphin nighting, and we'll get to clamping this one in place. I really did not think I would have both shear clamps clamped into place today, but well, I still don't have them in, but it's looking very likely barring catastrophe. So, I'm gonna grab a drink, maybe a little ice cream treat, and uh, come out here, spread some dolphinite, and see if we can get this thing popped in. And uh, Grandpa's gonna come down right after he does chores, right after he feeds the llamas tomorrow morning. So he'll be down here at like 8 a.m. and uh, hopefully I'll have this all clamped in and we'll just rip through and put the bolts in and then it's on to the rust hooks. So Grandpa's coming down this morning to help me fasten them. Before I do that, I wanna go and just double check everything. So we're gonna drop a plumb bob down from our uh, center wire here and make sure that the center line's in line. We'll probably check it in four or five spots and if those match up and seem good, then everything else should be as well. Three foot, four and a half. So we are that side of the boat right now is about one sixteenth of an inch wider than that side of the boat. I don't think that's worth messing with. <laughs> Whatever side of the wire's on, going to make a difference and uh, to be within a sixteenth is plenty good. We're just after midship here and we have the string from the clamp pulled as tight as I can get it and I think we're good. We are <laughs> smack dab between the lines. So, so far I've checked out two places on the hull and everything is checked out just fine. Grandpa should be here soon and we'll see about getting this clamp bolted down. So other than the knees, where the knees are going to land, uh, the starboard clamp is all bolted in. Uh, also where the breast hooks are going to be. So the very, very ends and a couple spots where the knees don't have bolts, but everything else is in. So now we're going to jump on over to the port side and get that fastened. And then once these are all done, I got to do a little shop cleanup and find all my tools and get things picked up a little bit. But then we're going to launch into the breast hooks, which will be cool. It's gonna be really nice to go work with pieces of timber as opposed to these giant long runs. Uh, so yeah, looking forward to it.
the way I would have done it. So when I uh, first said I was going to build a boat and do a YouTube channel, do you expect this? No. No. But, what the hell? I've seen a lot of things in my lifetime I never expected. Do you remember when you uh, shot me with an air nailer on Christmas Day? Oh, I Day? know that one. Sure, I planned that one right <laughs> I also remember the first time ever driving the four-wheeler and driving it right into the side of your truck. Oh, David. <laughs> really. Yeah, maybe. Coming and getting me out of school when the goats were giving birth. Did I? Yeah. And then we'll do the next one and then skip because that's a little bit neat. It would have been done a long time ago. Oh yeah, is that how it works? Yeah. Flush. The tick cool. tock. That's it. All right, I'll round up my drill. The clamps are in. Next up is the breast hooks. So if you look down the boat and you look at the clamp, you'll notice that there are some clamps where there should be some bolts. And the reason for that is because that's where knees are going. And when the knees get put in, there will be a bolt that'll go through the frame, and through the clamp, and through the knee. And I wanna drill those once the knees are in place. So those are clamped for now. But any place in the boat where there isn't a knee, we've put in a 3 8 bronze carriage bolt to hold the clamp in. You'll notice that they alternate. So you have one high and one low. And the reason for that is these split frames are not terribly wide to be putting a 3 8 inch bolt through. So we don't want to put two per plank because um, then we would risk splitting the frames here. The other thing is we don't want to split the clamp. So by having one high and one low, we only have one fastener per frame. And for this to split along the grain line, it would have to travel a huge distance. Now, don't forget that the shelf is gonna go in here and the shelf's also gonna get through bolted through the frame. So we are gonna have another 3 8 bolt bit above this one. And then that shelf will also get bolted and screwed down into the clamp. So by the time the shelf is screwed and bolted into the clamp and bolted into the frame, all of this will be really rigid. And the fact that there's only one bolt here will be made up for by the fact that there's another one up here. So don't worry about that. So here's the deck beam pattern. It comes in and you can see that the pattern hits the clamp and they're at the same angle. So those meet really nicely. And that's really important because when the shelf goes in, it'll sit on top of the clamp here, and that will make sure that it projects at the correct angle so it meets up with the bottom of the deck beam here. Uh, so the deck beam will, will get raised up like that, it'll sit on top of the shelf, and the shelf will follow the deck beam. If we just put these in here at 90 degrees, say, in some places, that shelf would be at way too steep of an angle some places it might be too low of an angle and we would have to do all sorts of crazy notching and shimming and dubbing to be able to get the deck beams to meet up with it well. 
So by making the deck beam pattern and getting the angle for the top of the clamp, getting the shelf in there at the right angle, all of these deck beams should just sit right on top of the shelf and get bolted in and be quite easy. Time will tell, we will see. We ran Thad's keel timber through the other day and the whole system that Joe put together here worked like a champ. Uh, so you might have noticed that Thad, Grandpa, Tim, and I, when we were doing Thad's keel, were not wearing masks. And the reason for that is that we were moving that really big timber around and we were more worried about miscommunication and us ditching that timber onto the ground and onto somebody or something like that than we were the four of us exchanging COVID. We've all been really isolated uh, and very careful and that's why I asked Tim to come over is because he's very isolated. It's just him and his wife and their two daughters at home. They all work from home. Um, so we figured that the, not being able to communicate as effectively with the masks on, since we couldn't hear each other, uh, we thought that that was more dangerous. So being able to point and to read lips and to be able to sort of kind of hear what someone was yelling at you, we, we thought was more important. Um, so that's why you didn't see us wear a mask when we were doing that. But uh, the rig that we put together here worked great. I'm really hoping that this is the final rendition for this uh, and we can just put it to work and kind of stop messing with it. Our big hiccup has been the dust collection because this thing just makes these really massive heavy chips and moving them takes a lot of air and a lot of power. And I think Joe the Machinist has finally solved that for us. So thank you so much, Joe. I essentially gave Joe a budget and just said, get it done, get it done well, let me know what you need. And this is what he came up with. So we made a really heavy channel iron base that everything sits on. So this is now one big unit. Uh, if we want to drag it up onto a trailer and bring it somewhere else, we can, and everything should stay in alignment during that process, which is really cool. It makes us very versatile as a setup for down the road. But the motor is on slides that Joe made, so just a couple of nuts, and we can move it side to side, front and back a little bit. And the big, big addition was twin belt drive here for the dust collector off of the power head for the planer. So we can engage the PTO, the big tooth belt runs the planer, and that planer runs the dust collector. So we have the dust collector running at a really nice high speed. It's picking up the chips really well. It's ejecting them out the back with gusto. Uh, and everything is really solid. Joe made these really great aluminum guards that go over the belt, since now the clutch and the control panel are fairly close to them. Uh, yeah, the motor's firing right up. Planer's been working like a boss, so I'm really hopeful that, that this is it and we can kind of quit messing around with it and we can just put this bad boy to work. So thank you, Joe. Thank you, Gannon and Benjamin, for the planer. Thank you, Larry, for the motor. And just thanks to everyone who's contributed and made this possible. We really would not be doing it in the way we're doing it without all the help. So thank you very, very much. Next time you build a boat and you want me to help you take these sharp edges off here. Yeah. <laughs> get your file. This is really got to get straightened. Thanks for joining us today. And just a reminder to subscribe if you haven't done so already. New videos come out every week. Next week, Steve moves on to building Arabella's breast hooks. So see you then. Have a good week.